Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl. And the number one question I always get around iPads, especially this year, can they now finally replace a dedicated laptop, whether that's a MacBook Air, a MacBook Pro, even a Windows related one, especially with the new M1 chip and especially with the Apple keyboard now. It comes in white. I know it's been out now for a couple of years and say we'll throw in the Apple Pencil as an extra accessory. Can this entire device replace your laptop or is this still limited? And I'll make this very short. You can kind of end it right after this. Currently right now, the answer is no. And to expand that answer, which comes down to a couple things, I just gotta give a huge shout out to the sponsor for today's episode, which is WeVPN. We obviously all know what a VPN service, I'm just listing the one that I use and that I trust the most. You can get access to over 50 different server locations, so you can unlock streaming services like Hulu, like Disney+, Plus, like Netflix, with no specific region lock. They're already offering their services for only two bucks and 69 cents a month. And if you use my promo code, you'll actually get an additional 10% off. To me, that's a no brainer. It's a VPN, we all use them. So definitely check this one out. Back over to the iPad. And the first thing that I think everyone was hyped about, especially in the tech space, was the intro of the iPad Pro with the M1 chip. So we saw that from last year in the MacBook Air, the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro, now the iMac and that same Awesome chip, so fanless design. Powerhouse of a chip, it really blows everything else out of the water, even if you're not in the Apple ecosystem. If you look at something as simple as benchmarks, it crushes everything that Intel AMD has to offer. Huge battery life because of its efficiency. I think we were all kind of giddy when that was coming to the iPad Pro, but the main thing that still limits the iPad is the iPad itself, or iPad OS to be very simple. And since I've been able to use this iPad Pro since the spring loaded event when this was announced, I think we are all hoping for that WWDC announcement of a proper iPad OS, something that could give us more functionality than what we currently have, something where we could run dedicated apps like Final Cut Pro, like Logic, and just give us a bit more versatility than I'll call this a glorified iPhone in a larger format. Instead, we got widgets and this year we have a big update now you can place widgets among the apps on your home screen obviously there were other things announced but i kind of was personally a bit let down with ipad os with the wwdc announcements this year it's a bit of a shame for a device that has so much potential with what we know is inside with what it can do on other devices for a device that still costs 1099, 1100 bucks, this is the 12.9 inch. And after the fact, you still have to add on, say the Magic Keyboard and say the Apple Pencil. And I think that's where the biggest drawback of an iPad is. You can use it as, I guess, it's standalone without any of these accessories. But I really think that limits its usage and almost makes it more of a media device. And if you really want it to replace your MacBook, your MacBook Air slash Pro, you do need a form of a dedicated keyboard to do simple things like typing out an email. We all need to use a keyboard. I don't care who you think you are, even if you're Superman, you cannot get a decent typing experience on a screen this size. I'd argue that you're probably faster typing out an email or a text over on your phone. If you're using your iPad at all to type, you need some sort of keyboard. And this is where the iPad experience really falls apart. It's the accessories, more specifically how much extra these cost. So 1099, 1100 bucks for the iPad, totally fine. You get a great device. Mind you, that's the base level storage option, only 128 gigs, which I think is personally too small. And then you wanna add on the Magic Keyboard, 350 bucks. The Apple Pencil too, an extra $100. You add tax, that's around 1500 bucks. And when you compare that now to a MacBook Air slash MacBook Pro even, those started around $1,000. So you're paying $500 more, which is around one and a half times the cost where you could instead buy a pair of AirPods, say even the Apple Watch SE for the exact same price. If you gave me those two options, I can already tell you I'd take the laptop plus other route. And don't get me wrong, I think the Magic Keyboard is the best case that you can buy. Of course, it should be for $400, but for that amount of money, you are still getting a soft touch case on the outside. Because this hasn't left the studio, it hasn't got dirty. My darker gray one, which I do travel with, the edges are kind of fraying, and that's not something that can easily be replaced for $400. I do expect a little bit more. 
There is another option that I'd recommend if you are insistent on getting a keyboard case combo, check out this one from Logitech. It pretty much does the exact same thing at a fraction of the price. I would say the build is a bit cheaper, but the most important thing is the keyboard and I would say it feels the exact same as the one found over on the Magic Keyboard. And if there's only one accessory to grab, the one that I would recommend most, because it's an iPad, because you interact with the screen all the time, it has to be a screen protector. So this one is from Paperlike and it differs from other screen protectors simply like how the name is called. It makes it seem like you're writing on paper. So if you use the Apple Pencil a lot, which I still think is the biggest application for iPads, if you're an artist, a graphic designer and use the Apple Pencil, this is a perfect device. My artistic skills are pretty limited to doodles in notes, so um, I won't try to pretend that I am an artist, but I do think the Apple Pencil slash iPad experience is the best stylus experience currently out right now. And the next big feature coming to the Pro, the 12.9 specifically, is the Pro Display XDR, which is the same output as the actual monitor display, which you kind of see over my left shoulder. That's kind of hard to portray over video. That's typically HDR content. So if you are in that high-end film space and need matching workflows from your monitor to say your iPad, this could be a good match. But once again, I think that's a very, very small percentage of us. Content on this display looks absolutely gorgeous, but I sometimes find it a bit of a shame that this perhaps becomes a glorified second screen. And when I'm working over on the display behind me, often I'm looking at this to watch football. I'm kind of crushing the Euro Cup on this device. It's almost sad that this has just become my glorified second screen, but this iPad still struggles to do what I find so productive on say my MacBook, which is mainly say video editing. I know you can get it done. I know we don't have dedicated Final Cut. There are other apps that you can use, but I am way quicker with shortcuts with my familiarity on my MacBook to edit. I've really tried to dedicate some serious amount of time to become proficient at editing on this, but it has doubled or even tripled my workflow time. In my last video that I created, I tried to do it on my iPad. I sadly struggled and I actually had to switch back to Mac OS. And maybe that is my fault. I am set in my Final Cut ways. I'm sadly getting a little bit older. Making that switch isn't as easy for me and maybe a five-year-old kid who picks this up could probably edit a video faster than me, but um, I personally don't think it's suitable for actual video work just yet. And now that you pretty much know my answer that this currently still can't replace a laptop, is the iPad Pro worth it as an iPad in general. I honestly think if you have the previous iPad Pro, so that's from 2018, you don't need to make the upgrade. Even if you're looking to buy a new iPad, I would still probably pick the iPad Air as my recommended choice. The A14 Bionic, which is more than a capable enough chipset to run the latest iPad OS, you can throw every single widget that you want on it, it will be able to handle and it honestly gives you a 95% similar experience to the more expensive larger iPad Pro, minus the faster screen refresh rate, minus the Pro Display XDR screen, which I don't really have content really to enjoy on this anyways. The iPad Air is still my choice, and until we see something more dedicated, something a bit more robust in iPad OS, I still cannot recommend that the iPad Pro slash any iPad in general to replace a laptop just yet. Anyways, that's kind of my overall thoughts around the iPad Pro. And just remember, if you are using say an iPhone and you can get by kind of totally fine on a mobile device, getting an iPad still isn't a bad option. It's essentially this in a larger form factor. You've got some extra goodies, of course, the Apple Pencil. I will say surprisingly, the one feature which I thought was a bit of a gimmick, but it's seen some actual use, is the front-facing camera with center stage, which is essentially a larger field of view and it follows you from area to area. I've been using that more as we spend more time on FaceTime. I still think the iPad is the best tablet experience that you can get across any device or any platform. I just don't think it's justified to spend that kind of money on something that is still limited by iPad OS. That's the last time I'll say it. And that's been my overall thoughts. Anyways, I'm rambling. I hope this video was short and concise enough. Let me know down below in the comments, have you replaced your laptop? Am I wrong? Can you prove or let other people know? Has the iPad changed your life? Has it replaced your laptop?
Maybe I'm the idiot. Who knows? We'll catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.